This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Did he? His heyday it was several years ago. Obviously, he still had, you know, a lot of influence and power and such, but he wasn't making hit records anymore. He really wasn't doing any of that. So I would imagine that the limelight is no longer on him and kind of his time had passed. That would certainly cause someone, if you've already reached such extreme highs, that highs that most people never get to uh, because of how far he went professionally, that you'd be still seeking something like that out. And that, I imagine, would then constitute extreme behavior. I mean, unless you can get that under control. So here's the one thing that I think you see a bifurcation with people in his kind of situation where they've achieved great celebrity, great success, um, as defined by society, will do. They either go down the dark path that it looks like he might have gone down, or you go down into the path that actually we're designed to also go down, that is service, mm -hmm. philanthropy. Because when in the greatest challenges in life where we face tra trauma, um, things that make us feel horrible, the best thing you can do is give, serve. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, even during the pandemic, I think you and I've probably talked about it, you know, many, many episodes ago, where if, if you're feeling down, you're feeling out, you're feeling like something's going wrong and sideways in your life, the best thing you can do to snap yourself out of it, serve. Mm -hmm. Figure out a way to be a service to others because biologically, genetically, our brain will re-snap and gets a feel-good feeling when we're kind of collaborating, being part of a group, being valued by those groups and organizations. So he went down supposedly a path of self, 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 self. Meanwhile, he was at a point he could have really taken it and channeled it outward. Mm -hmm. And it would have given the brain the same rewards as drugs. And so that's where I think that happens. Again, I'm, I'm simplifying yeah. potentially a complicated situation. But for me, it really comes down to that. You know, we can do a, an unhealthy dark path or we can do a path of service, which will do the same thing for our brains. Mm -hmm. One thing that I, I find interesting when you bring that up of philanthropy and, and doing service and, and, and helping others, I, I think in his mind, Diddy was doing service for others. I think he thought he was going down a philanthropist route, not necessarily the traditional route, but a route in his mind that he thought was giving. Uh, there's so many videos that we're seeing surface right now. And the ones that stand out to me that that are very bizarre and disturbing are him with kids yeah. and him with the kids going, hey, tell so and so what's your name? And then the kid gives their name. No, Combs. Combs is your last name. I'm adopting you. And he seemed to be. Praying is the right word, but I think in, in his twisted world in mind, he was he was bringing them in. He was adopting them because they were always these kids in really tough, dark situations. And, and I don't know what happened to these kids. That's the weird part of all these videos. Like, Oh, you're adopting all these. Oh, where the hell are they now? Um, but there was these, these young girls, there were these young boys in some of these videos. And it's like, Hey, it's your birthday. We're having a party and everybody's looking like we, we, we got you off the street. We saved you. And now you're going to have a great life living with Diddy. Those are some of the most bizarre videos I have ever seen. Um, what do you make of of those sort of of public displays that he was doing, and what was actually going on? Well, here's why they're bizarre. Where's the focus on yeah. himself? Look at me. I'm doing this. It's my name. It's all about me. Look how good I am. Yeah. What yeah. he's lacked in his life because he was living in an echo chamber, which many people do. Again, I'm not saying or bad against him mm -hmm. it's a lot of people do he just had a lot of resources to exasperate it and that is you know he fell in, in love with the cult of him he had an echo chamber that says his way was great he did not have and the thing we've talked about before a loving critic mm -hmm. that said hey you say you're about doing something for others then why are you keep focusing on how it makes you look how are you f keep focusing on look at me look at me look at me look at me we me 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 mm -hmm. me the amount of i statements you know go back and watch videos of him even when he says he's doing service to others and helping kids get their start or whatever he's doing it looks weird to us that's why where's the focus yeah is it actually on the child that he's saying he's going to help or is it actually to make himself feel good about justifying his own actions and serving himself 
one hundred percent. I want to know where the hell these kids went. I mean, that's, that's like, did he truly? Was this all for posterity? Like, did he truly adopt these kids? Did he truly bring them in? Was it just for a video, or what the hell happened? So this is why also you're seeing the investigation taking a long time because the same questions you're asking, law enforcement's asking. They want to talk to those kids, and when mm-hmm. those they're going to talk to those kids, who else did you know? Who else did you see? So you see these tendrils going out because remember, we keep saying this every time you have the potential for trafficking, um, innocent images, things like that, the tendrils go far and wide. And so you're you're they're trying to lock down this network and trying to figure out who's involved to the furthest extent they possibly can. And especially if it's taken place over a large number of years with a lot of people that are influenced by a, <laughs> a lot of money. Mm-hmm. It's going to go a long way. How difficult is a case like this to investigate where it it spans back decades? I mean, we're talking back to the 90s uh, where these allegations originally began. And you get closer to today in the last couple of years, the Rodney Jones uh, civil suit basically focuses on the last three years. But you go way, way back. You look at the Cassie lawsuit. You look at uh, several of the other things that that have become public. And I mean, it's a pattern of behavior. Uh, Is it difficult to get concrete evidence to prove uh, some of these claims the further back it goes? Yeah, and you hit it right there, concrete evidence, because you're going to have a lot of, and I'm sorry to say it, but it's true, you know, the longer time period you have, you have a lot of false memory potential implants or a lot of um, lapsed memories. Yeah, people are going to tell you that things happen when they didn't happen now becomes your memory. I mean, so that it, memory plays a, a crucial role in this. But like you said, though, you're having a preponderance of statements, a preponderance of evidence, but they're actually going to have to go, as we've said before, where the evidence leads. And so they're going to be looking at more current things because it won't take I don't there's a lot of allegations. There's a lot of people that are going to be interviewing, but I don't think it's going to take a whole lot of going back tens of years, Mm -hmm. decades to topple the to topple the entire thing. I think it's going to be able to be pretty recent to be able to do that. But I think they're going to be able to show that arc of where mm-hmm. that started decades ago, most likely. Who are they wanting to talk to right now, do you think? I'm not necessarily asking for names, but the type of people that, that they're looking at uh, getting information from. We already saw um, the basketball player uh, who was the drug mule uh, allegedly for him, that they busted him for you know some gummies at the airport. Uh, but obviously... There's more to it than just that. Um, Who else in his world are they wanting to get information from that they likely could be a confidential informant and help with the case? They're going to be looking at anyone and every everything that's going to have direct knowledge of individuals that were abused and trafficked in any way first, um, and then also including drugs. Mm -hmm. They're going to be looking for the sources of those informations, where it came from. And who had direct access to those things and knowledge of those people involved. And then they're going to the next thing is to do is collaborate, collaborate it with other people that saw exactly the same thing, because that's what because it's going to be hearsay until it can be collaborated um, by a lot of other individuals as well, as well as an evidentiary. You know, he, if you can get any kind of um, biologicals, if you can get any kind of genetics, any kind of DNA, things like that. And he had a big staff uh, for him. Mm-hmm. I would imagine those are going to be some of the the key people that they're going to be trying to get to talk. Do they really have a choice uh, in talking to uh, federal authorities, especially if they were involved in some of this? I mean, obviously, at the behest of their boss, quote unquote. But if your boss is asking you to do illegal behaviors, it doesn't really matter. You still can't do it, even if the boss says do it. Yeah, they're definitely going to be going for them. There's no doubt they'll be going for them. And there's no, again, I'm not the lawyer on this, but Mm -hmm. the only privilege that exists is between husband and wife Mm -hmm. uh, or married couple, you know, however that transpires in whatever state you're in. But it's that's it. You know, everyone else is free game. Sick of the ads? We are too. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.